For all intents and purposes, this is the final unboxing of the Commonwealth Collection Wave 2. We've gone through six of them so far, plus a seventh with other licensed merchandise and other IPs, making this the final one we're going to deal with. The sheer amount of merchandise we've been covered over the course of the past two months has been nothing short of enormous, yet it's only a fraction of what the Commonwealth Collection has to offer. Whether this series continues into the future is at the behest of collectors and enthusiasts like you. A huge thank you to those who've shown support for the sales, especially those who've actually bought something from the collection. You're facilitating the documentation and preservation of these iconic collectibles, and that's a positive from anybody's perspective. However, should it become clear the sales are slowly dwindling and we're not getting our return on investment, that'll be it. For now, let's just finish off Wave 2 and find out if the best was saved for last. The contents of whatever emerges in this unboxing will be making the way to my eBay and Amazon shops this Saturday, August 19th at 8.30am Eastern Standard Time. We'll quickly take a look at each item one by one, and I'll elaborate when appropriate. Now on with the show! You see, what am I supposed to do with this? I mean, he's right on the box. Are you gonna leave? Thank you. Alright, this could be the last time we open up a fresh box of common all together, so let's cherish this moment, shall we? This is the best side gig in the world. Going through this merchandise, inspecting it all, organizing it all, and selling it to collectors who will, well, give it a better home than inside a box, right? Plastic bag, out of the way. We might quickly just go through a lot of the stuff since we've seen half of it before, but the stuff we haven't, I'll be sure to elaborate on. Here is a 6.5 inch Good Stuff Toys Darth Vader. A lot of these repeat items are originally in boxes that were assortments of just one item or just one set, then were dispersed into boxes like these so we'd have equal distribution. Here is a 5 inch Good Stuff Toys Girl Bird. This one actually looks fairly decent as far as they go. They tend to be pretty wonky. And interestingly, this set did not get the Hogs and Kisses app icon tag, just got the generic second gen tag. Just front and back for you. Here is a retail 5 inch Seasons plush. This one coincidentally also got the generic second gen tags. This of course is a Go Green Get Lucky Red. We have still yet to see a 5 inch Go Green Get Lucky Pig. I know that's an item a lot of people have been looking for. Here is a 6.5 inch Princess Leia from Good Stuff Toys. This appears to be a generic 5 inch Darth Vader, a retail variation. Right next to him is a 6 inch Winter Matilda, your typical limited edition US release. There are so many different variations to a lot of these plushies, but that's what happens when you're working with a lot of distributors in a lot of different countries to serve a lot of different customers. Over the course of multiple years, variations are going to happen. Here is a 6 inch US release of Winter Chuck, speaking of I guess. This one is new with tags, first time we've seen one of these, right? Here is a third gen release of the Terrence backpack clip. One of the few flock members we've yet to see in backpack clip form. The almighty construction hat pig is back! So now even more people can bear witness to his glory. Here's one of these Santa Red Santa hats. Santa Hatception as I coined a few unboxings ago. According to the tag, it's actually just called a Christmas hat. I guess their name works, but personally I like my name better. Here, and we'll put it on for old time's sake. Oh yeah. I ever tell you I love all these novelty hats? These things are awesome. Here's one of these ceramic Christmas ornaments that for once isn't in bubble wrap. It's one of these wreath ornaments that has the one dangling bird on the bottom. And I don't know if I ever mentioned this, but these are supposed to be customizable at one point. Like you were supposed to get your family name on the banner here, and each one of the characters on the wreath and dangling from were supposed to represent a family member. So you got the two spouses here and the kids dangling from the bottom. That's why there's so many different variations on these. These are actually one of the few items that we're allowed to sell on Amazon, and the stock image that they force us to use for these actually shows what that looks like, so if you're curious, go check that out. The dreaded singular rubber shoe is back, and this time, it has Blue's face plastered on it. Though otherwise, it is very similar to that red chuck shoe that we looked at in wave one. It is a right foot size 10. It says Angry Birds on the side. The inside is lined with blue fabric. Blue's face print actually does look pretty good. And the back appears to be a bit dirty. Could use a scrub. And I wonder, considering these are samples, 
I wonder if they were made as one, or if the other shoe is actually lost. Construction at Pig in the bottom corner will double check for me, but I'm starting to wonder if that Chuck shoe was a left or a right. They might go together. Here's a second generation helmet pig in the bag. We've seen quite a few of these throughout Wave 2. Speaking of helmet pigs, here's the 5 inch Angry Birds Go Corporal Pig, the undamaged helmet pig, of course. So I believe this will do it for our 5 inch Angry Birds Go set. All characters are now available, besides Bubbles, of course. My little guy, he's a one of one, unfortunately, I guess. But here's one of my favorites that isn't a one of one. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, he's real, the updated construction campaign in all of his glory. The CommonwealthToy.com exclusive. Wow. I mean, is this surreal to hold or what? This is my all-time dream plush. Construction at Pig being my favorite, the original 2012 release. This guy, I've, I've wanted one of these for so long. You guys have no idea. I mean, this is, to me, objectively the worst version because it looks less like the character. The hat itself isn't very good, but, I mean, it's... It's really the only other true variation of it besides the five inch that I don't have. So how about that? So this was released in 2016. It wasn't supposed to be released, though it did get a style number and a barcode. It was made as a test sample. They couldn't make the felt hat anymore. So they decided, okay, let's see what a plush hat looks like on this guy. And so they gave him this. And it did a decent job. I mean, it's still got the three bumps on top. It's got the general rim shape to it. Yellow color is correct. This guy even has a sound chip and they could actually put it underneath this hat for once. So he more closely aligns with Chef and Postman. And by the way, they did not make a soft hat version of Cowboy Hat Pig. Instruction Hat Pig was the only sample of this variety. And boy, do I wish I knew somebody at Commonwealth was screwing up by selling this guy on their website. $90, I mean, especially in hindsight, that's not a bad deal at all. Especially considering he is a sample. And by the way, I mentioned the Cowboy at Pig sample. A lot of you are probably wondering if the Accessorized Pig samples still exist. You know, the 2011 variations. I'm just hoping the Construction at Pig does, so that way I can get my hands on the Holy Trinity. Oh, that would be so amazing. It's the only one I'm missing, out of technicality anyways. Anyways, enough of my personal desires. This is by far my favorite sample, and now you too have a chance to acquire this guy. How cool is that? So how about that? We saw both Construction at Pigs today. Here is another 6 inch Winter Matilda. Here is a Curtis Adler red Christmas stocking, new with tags. Here is a Stormtrooper backpack clip as well as a Darth Vader, both on card. Here is our second Hogs and Kisses good stuff, this time it is a Valentine's Matilda. Here is a 4 inch mini red, but this time it is not a first generation, it is actually a second generation with a sound chip. We don't see these too often in the US, this is more of a UK thing. And here is a 4 inch mini bomb to go with him. He is also of the Soundchip's second generation variety. So both their touch tags have the code K11 on them, meaning they were made in November of 2011. So they are likely from the same assortment, but considering the context of where they come from, they could also be from a box set. I'll have to investigate that. Here is one of the cancelled Angry Birds Star Wars vehicles. It is the Minion Pig TIE Fighter, the first variation to be exact. The second variation is the bluish green one, which has better details, but the gray on this one, at least to me, is probably a bit more accurate. And you just gotta appreciate the designs in these, right? So the middle pot area kind of resembles a minion pig, right? It's got the ears up here, it's got eyebrows up here, eyes, snout, mouth down here, and then he's got these wings that jut out. So they too have printing on them, so they have, you know, a bunch of vents on them, but they also have the minion pig snout in the middle, so very ingenious design and well translated to a plush. Here's a good one from Angry Bird Star Wars 2. It of course is Darth Sidious, Emperor Palpatine. So this guy's actually one of three in the world in five inch. I of course have one sitting back there. There's this guy. And interestingly, Rovio has one still perched in their HQ. Though it figures they want this guy, right? One of the most iconic characters from both Star Wars 1 and Star Wars 2. Now the last time we discussed this guy, I was informed or rather reminded that his crown up here this is technically a fork. Now the only reason why we know this 
keep a copy of this book by me at all times, is thanks to the Angry Bird Star Wars character encyclopedia. Where in his page, actually points out, so I can find it. Right here, that it points to that area, underneath his cloak, a handy place for Swindle to hide his favorite fork. Very interesting for them to point that out. To me, I don't really see a fork. Looks like a crown. <laughs> anyway, speaking of his cloak, you can't take this off. It's sewn tight to his body, so even if you wanted to see what was underneath, you can't. And I doubt there's anything underneath there anyways. Here are two more Angry Bird Christmas ornaments. We have a red and a pig, both wearing Santa hats. Very festive. So going back to those peculiar samples that we looked at previously, you know, that green bird on the UFO and that blue bird on the plane, well, you can add a third to that group. Because what on earth is this thing? Well, actually, I may have an idea for what exactly this thing is. And it goes back to what people in the comments have been saying. So when we looked at that blue bird previously, a lot of people pointed out that it looked very similar, if not identical, to Fun Video TV's depiction of blue. And at least to me, this yellow bird looks pretty much identical to Fun Video TV's depiction of Chuck, down to the little black wings on the side. Now how crazy would that be? If Commonwealth actually referenced Fun Video TV, I mean, if you know, you know, and if you don't, I can't explain it to you. How crazy would that be? <laughs> I mean, go ahead, use them as a reference. They're definitely not official. <laughs> definitely not official. Now, that doesn't explain where these vehicles come from. This thing isn't even a vehicle. I mean, it's just some red and blue saucer, but the UFO and the plane, I don't know where those come from. And I certainly don't know where that green bird comes from, but I can at least say that blue and this Chuck, they're 100% fun video TV. I mean, there's no getting around that. That's absolutely insane. This Chuck looks pretty depressed though. I don't know where they get that from. Interesting samples to say the least. This guy is also second generation, as well as the saucer in this case. So I think we may have figured out the mystery, but case isn't closed just yet. Fun Video TV official merchandise. I mean, it's not confirmed by any means, but I'm rolling with it, okay? Here's a bubble wrap Christmas ornament. I think it's the only one in this entire box today. Right in the back here, we have another one of the Cancel Star Wars vehicles. This time it is the Star Destroyer. This, of course, is supposed to be a 5 inch Star Destroyer, just like all the others. This has prints on all sides, it appears, including on the underside and on the back, where you see one of the pig faces. So, not just the structure up here, which also has prints for the eyes and the snout, but also on the backside. That's pretty neat. Here is a 5 inch Good Stuff Toys Han Solo. No side tag on this one, interestingly. Here is a 10 inch size development sample of Helmet Pig. So it doesn't look like we're going to complete the 9 inch or 10 inch size development set. We're going to get a combination of the two. So there's his sample tag that actually says 10 inch on it. He is a first generation just like the others. So this may be all that exists for all I know. At the moment, I do not know. And here is the mustache pig to go with him. It's also a 10 inch size development sample. So I believe we have all characters represented as a size development sample now. How about that? Here is an 8 inch Santa bomb. This is the second generation Seasons Greetings variation. Looks like we have a couple of sound chip Angry Birds space plushies in here. Here is a lightning blue. Let's see if their sound chips work. Okay, so no on this guy. Let's try Laser Chuck. No on this guy either. These are all third gen, by the way, just like the ones that we've looked at in previous unboxings. Here is Icebird. We got a winner. And in the back here, here is a Super Space Red. He does not work, so we are one for four. That is a pretty big sad, if I'm being honest. Here is a Tesco variation of the C-3PO. Here's an eight inch Matilda. A second generation release. Here is a Tesco Princess Leia. And here is a Tesco Luke Skywalker. This time he actually has a complete belt. Goes all the way around. Just like it should. Here is an Angry Birds Go Foreman pig, who once again does not have the rubbery detail on his goggles. Yet to see one like that. In fact, I've yet to see one that lacks the goggles completely. At least like we saw in the Hong Kong showroom video. Here is an 8 inch Chewbacca. A finish variation to be exact. Here is an 8 inch Chamber Birds Go Red, identical to what we've looked at previously. 
So, did notice his shades do look a little dirty. Nothing that can't be cleaned. And he is new with tags, by the way. Here are the last two Amy Bird character flags, at least for the moment, until the next wave. And here is an Amy Bird's bop bag, new in the box. And the last item of the entirety of wave two is what appears to be a size development sample of red, very fitting. Now he has no tag on to indicate that's the case, or tell you what exact size he is, but this is definitely bigger than your one-of-the-mill 8-inch red. And so with that, that marks the end of the Commonwealth Collection Wave 2. And just some housekeeping before we sign off. In the description, you'll find a survey asking you questions like, which box is most interesting, or how was your customer experience with the Commonwealth Collection? I greatly appreciate any sort of feedback or legitimate suggestions as to how we can improve moving forward. And do keep your eye on AIM's list from this wave because there could be heavy discounts or flash sales in the future. You just never know. Something like this is completely unprecedented and will slowly adjust to the market as we go. Though, don't bank on it, especially with the samples, right? Because once it's gone, it's gone. Fulfilling my promise by putting out one of these unboxings each and every week has been exhausting to say the least. That's not even to mention setting up the online shop with all the new items that keep coming in. I look forward to resuming production on my merchandise retrospectives, which are really and undoubtedly my favorite projects to work on. And if you have any comments, questions, or complaints, you can let me know in the comment section below. With that I say, peace out. Goodbye.